so hard, libraries can't find me. That crack. That crack. That crack. Read, read so hard, libraries can't find me. That crack. That crack. That crack. He said, shake and we get married at the strand. His Friday reads a bad so he can't have my hand. You bought so hard? Okay, you're bowling. But I read so hard? I'm JK Rowling. Read so hard? Another area that we have people come in looking for will be trying to do high school projects or even college projects. We, we have people from Northeastern that will come in looking to do something with primary documents to write some type of paper. If you come in with some idea of what it is that you want to look for, we will go through and try and guide you to where those documents would be either here or if we know of them somewhere else. Uh, frequently, we, we will not have what you're looking for. Um, Frequently when high school kids come in, they have a very broad topic and they need to narrow it down. And uh, we, we will also go through it. If you don't have an idea what you want to do, we can go through and say, well, we have these documents. Why don't you look at these? This is, this is a, a, a small contained area that you could probably get something out of in the course of a couple weeks. When somebody is looking for something in the records, uh, in the city clerk's office. Usually they have a topic. Uh, hopefully they have a date to go with it. The first place I would look would be the printed indexes. The older indexes, you can look up things such as when they did put the sidewalk in, you can look under the name of a street and there'll be an ordinance for a sidewalk on that street, etc. Some of the most, the most popular set of documents that we have here at IRAD are a, a quirky little set of documents called the Chicago City of Chicago Film Censorship Documents or Record. And um, until the 1980s, the city ran a committee of six people who looked at all movies that were um, not X-rated, had to be R-rated or, or, or safer to decide whether they were safe for children to watch. And then they would break, break, make recommendations and say whether you could, you know, you know, children could watch them or not. And they produced a card for every single movie that came out from, from Hollywood in which they rated the thing and described what was wrong with it, if, um, you know, if there was a problem with it, and what they wanted to get rid of. So in this one, there's a scene where Father's paramour has, is seen coming from the bedroom dressed in a slip. They really didn't like that. Was, you can't show this movie because of that. Local transportation seemed to be most interesting to me for a variety of things. But the one document there that I found um, was a petition from the Negro Chamber of Commerce. I don't know if that's the correct name of the group. But it was done in the 1930s, and it was to petition that the presumed, uh, what eventually became the CTA, that this and the, that the city would own and operate. Um, the the petition was for uh, African Americans to be able to not only be uh, use the system that when it was uh, completed, but that they also be employed by uh, S what became CTA uh, employees. And it took all the way to uh, 1945 when the ordinance was passed to create the CTA. And if you read the ordinance, you can definitely find that they paid attention to exactly what that petition said, that they did put in there, you know, uh, information about employment and use that, that was to the wishes of that group. In terms of our collection, where we're, we're looking primarily at, at historical materials, it's pre-1940, everything is pre-1940, a lot of it's even earlier than that. We, we end up referring a lot to other institutions in Chicago. Um, Chicago happens to have a lot of resources for history. Uh, probably the first one is the Chicago Public Library, it has the downtown collection, the municipal library, but then they also have um, neighborhood collections, so that over at Solzer, which is maybe a mile and a half from here, they have a, a large regional Chicago collection 
of you know things on North Park or on Austin, um, and that's you know it's part of the city, so it, it's free, and they're they're really really cooperative and, and helpful. Um, after that, there's probably the Chicago Historical uh, Museum, Chicago I guess Chicago History Museum, uh, which has a really interesting large collection, and and they're also very helpful. But it's just you know it's it, it's just a question of whether they have materially what you're looking for. Um, then Chicago has a great number of neighborhood historical societies, so things like the Rogers Park or the Edgewood Historical Society. Um, those are kind of hit and miss in terms of how good they are or what their collections are like. It varies by society depending on how much they, they've got or, 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 or can be useful. But then it also varies from t over time. You know, you could be a, a historical society that's really useful and you go back five years from now and you can't even find them because the, the board of trustees has changed or, or the they're usually volunteer, so the volunteers have, have uh, changed and, and they're just not as useful. Um, and then there's the other universities. The University of Illinois Circle, or I guess it's University of Illinois Chicago, has a, a very large collection of, of archives and they're also very, very helpful. Um, Northwestern has some, and but they're helpful. I haven't used Chicago, University of Chicago, but I'm, I'm sure they would be useful too. 